Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt, and uh, we have some severe weather Wait, on the- What are you doing in my chair? Since when did you get here? Get, get out of my chair! Out of my chair! Out of my chair! Give me my headphones! How, how did you even get in here? <laughs> Jeez. Alright. Sorry about that, chat. Uh, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. Welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for December 10th, 2022. And boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about. We've got severe weather, we've got a potential blizzard associated with it, and then on the off chance, this storm later along the line could produce some big time wintry conditions for much of the mid-Atlantic. So if you guys for, are excited for all of that, please be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe before we get further on into the video. But let's go ahead and talk about the severe weather aspect of this because that is the more short-term forecast of this video. We have a 30% chance of severe weather here for portions of southern Arkansas and northern Louisiana, as well as the surrounding areas such as Mississippi and Texas. We also have a 15% around that. That is for Tuesday. So when we were talking about on our last video, we said that there was a 15% for Monday. That has now been lowered due to the fact that the conditions for that silo event have now somewhat decreased. And we talked about that in our last video. We also have an event here, just kind of the leftovers of Tuesday as it goes into Wednesday here. And you can see we have a 15% chance for severe weather across portions of the southern deep south, right along the coastal Gulf of Mexico areas. We'll move off to the North American model here now, and we'll show you guys how this thing will progress by looking at the general North American sector. Uh, once again, the timing is going to be on the upper left-hand portion of your screen in Zulu time, so that means I'll have to translate it for you, and uh, we'll just have to go for it that way. Uh, but we have a lot of snow and a lot of rain that is across portions of the Pacific Northwest and the Western United States. And it's bringing a lot of snow, a lot of rain, a lot of precipitation in general. We'll talk about how much of precipitation there can be, at least with the snowfall totals, a little bit later on. But that'll continue across the board, and that is essentially what is the beginning of our giant bowling ball trough, this big low-pressure system that is going to move on through and create our severe weather for Tuesday. And we mentioned how this could potentially also... Uh, you know, be accompanied by a blizzard. We also have the threat for winter weather here on the northern side of this low pressure system in the northern plains as well as the upper Midwest. So something to watch out there for Nebraska, the Dakotas, as well as portions of Minnesota and Iowa. And then back over here. So this is Wednesday at zero Z. That's sometime around six o'clock central standard time. This kind of trough right here, this, uh, this uh, boundary that is accompanied with the trough, I should say, our cold front, is going to create our severe weather here on the southern side, as we have mentioned. And uh, we'll kind of look into it as to how this entire event is coming on through together. We'll take a look at our upper level wind shear at about 500 millibars, and you can see our trough really starts to get its act together here over the next day or two. As you can see, we have a lot of our reds and even some yellows peeking in according to our scale on the bottom part of our screen. That is an upwards of about 80 to almost 100 knots of wind shear at 500 millibars, which is about 6 kilometers above ground level. You'll see our trough is starting to get all the more organized. We see a lot more of these circles, which are isobars, which means that the more of them there are, the bigger the uh, pressure differential there is within this entire system. Because we have a lot of steep pressure drop-offs within this, this could be a pretty strong low-pressure system. We'll move off now to kind of the moisture standpoint of this. We'll look at our dew points here, and anything really in the blues or even the purples is good enough for severe weather. As we get into Monday, you notice the reason why they kind of took the uh, event away is because we're lacking a little bit of our dew points here across the board with the exception of the southern portions of Louisiana and Texas. As we move off to Tuesday now, we see we have a big dry line and or cold front that's going to move on through. That's going to create a lot of very strong damaging winds, more than likely, but I cannot rule out a little bit later on than today, probably closer to the dusk hours, 
is when we can see some potential tornadoes with some of the storms out in front of this, especially in the northeastern portions of Louisiana. Matt and I were talking about it just a few minutes ago as to how we saw a lot of veering over there along the Mississippi River near Vicksburg and Monroe. So that's definitely going to be something to watch out for, especially if someone were to chase over in that general vicinity. We mentioned all that as well, and we're going to show you that there's enough, you know, there's enough moisture there, but there's also somewhat enough energy here as well as we look over at the convective available potential energy you see we have some blue contours right within this area right there and we have some good veering with it too if you know how to look at crossovers uh for the most part from what matt and i are seeing we do have a uh an environment that is conducive for some severe weather uh particularly some once again very strong damaging winds that's going to be the primary threat for anywhere along the cold front but any storm that can get out in front of it, especially along the dusk time frame of around 5, 6, 7 p.m., we could potentially see our best chance for tornadoes sometime around that time frame. So let's talk about timings here for right now. Uh, we'll go more into detail about this tomorrow, but with the lower resolution models that we have right now, uh, this is pro you know practically as good as we can get to kind of get an idea as to what our timings can be. So here we are. We're uh, getting into Tuesday morning, and you see our boundary that is already starting to develop on the backside just like that. That is our dry line and or cold front, and it's starting to march on through sometime around 15Z. Uh, that would be in the uh, late morning hours. We're getting into uh, close to noon now, and now we're getting into about the 3 o'clock Central Standard Time hours here as our boundary starts to move on through and invade portions of Arkansas and Louisiana. As I said, out in front of this here, if we can get out in front of this boundary and get a couple of these showers and thunderstorms to form somewhere right around this box, that is where I can anticipate maybe the best chance for uh, maybe a tornado or two, especially somewhere right around here due to just the really good environment that we have right within that area. But as that continues to move on through, the boundary will once again um, kind of dominate the area. And as we get towards the late evening and the overnight hours, it'll start to become more dominantly of a wind event. So uh, let's move over to the Euro model because the low resolution uh, convective allowing models kind of end there. And you can see our low pressure system once again starting to get bigger and bigger with a lot more snow around it as well. But you see our cold front that continues to smash through the deep south. That'll continue to linger into the Wednesday morning hours, which is the reason why the Storm Prediction Center also gave a 15% chance for severe weather over on Wednesday. So that'll continue to linger. Of course, a lot of showers and thunderstorms that are shown here, according to the Euro model, continues to linger. And once again, a lot of snow continues to fall over portions of the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. Uh, we'll show you the snow totals here real quickly, and you can see uh, there's a quite a, a good amount. Uh, once you start to get into the uh, kind of the darker purples, uh, as well as, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to say what those colors are because it's more like a magenta-ish type uh, getting into the salmon colors as well. That's when you can get to about a foot to even two feet of snow possible. And that is over here near the Dakotas, Nebraska, as well as uh, maybe even lingering off into portions of Montana and Wyoming. But don't be surprised if you see some additional snowfall totals over here in central to northern Wisconsin, as well as uh, central to northern Minnesota, as there could be some lingering amounts of snow over in this area. However, uh, just because this event, you know, impacts this area doesn't mean that it's, you know, going to die off. Because unfortunately, uh, for much of the rest of the eastern United States, specifically the east central and the northeastern portions of the United States, uh, that isn't really the case. And uh, we actually have our low pressure system continue to march off towards the east. And bing, bang, boom, we have a lot of snow that is anticipated across portions of the northern Appalachians. As well as, uh, if we go back in time just a couple of frames, you see a lot of these salmon colors over here. And this is a lot of freezing rain. So if that ends up coming into fruition, we could see some relatively significant freezing rain totals uh, somewhat into the inch uh, frame over here of how much ice there could be accumulated within some of these spots. So definitely something to watch out for. We're still a little bit far away to tell as to whether or not these uh, totals are accurate as well as the placement of this. And that's usually the case with most winter events. We can't really tell until we're about a day or two out. But 
if this does hold into fruition, we can see ice totals and upwards of an inch in some spots. And we can even see some snow totals that are relatively significant and upwards in about, believe it or not, 30 inches or more within places like central Pennsylvania. That'll include myself. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how much I actually get, as well as the eastern panhandle of West Virginia and western New York uh, as well as the surrounding areas. Now, what does this mean for areas over here, like in Baltimore, DC, Philly? You guys, this is where things get really interesting because if we take a look back once again at the actual radar here, the simulated radar, depending upon where this low pressure system is, you can see it's right there. Depending upon its placement can determine as to whether or not you guys can actually get snow. If this moves off a bit further to the east, you guys are going to get snow, maybe even some freezing rain as well. And that could also be for portions of New York, uh, well, I should say southern New York, like Long Island and New York City as well. But it just all depends upon that low pressure. And if it moves further west, then expect you guys to get nothing but rain and stuff like that. Well, what about areas over here in New England? Well, according to this, you guys are well into the territory of getting a lot of snow uh, over a foot is potentially possible maybe even an upwards of two feet is uh you know in your forecast here if this model continues to hold up no freezing rain for you guys uh due to the fact that you guys are a little too far north for that style of event so that's definitely going to be something we're going to watch there's a lot of uncertainties with this style of nor'easter that can come uh, but for right now uh, the certainties that we do have is there could potentially be a blizzard in the northern portions of the United States, particularly over near the northern plains in the upper Midwest. And there is anticipated to be a strong, severe weather event from Tuesday into Wednesday for portions of the Deep South. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. It does help my channel out a lot, as well as subscribing and turning on notifications so you guys stay up to date with all the latest information that I do provide. If this continues to keep going, I will be live streaming. Of course, Matt will uh, not be around. He's got his uh, his job for the most part. He's got bills to pay and stuff like that. So uh, he'll be doing his job, moving around the country and whatnot. But of course, whenever Matt comes around, you know, I gotta, you know, pay my respects right. to him because he's 100%, you uh, know, he's the other half with Morgan. Hey chat, how y'all doing? He's the uh, other half of the uh, channel that helps us out here. So big props to him for helping us out here on the Nate Snyder YouTube channel. Once again, this really does help if you would help spread this information to as many people as possible because there are a lot of people that are going to be impacted. Leave a comment down below if you have a question. Of course, I'll be combing the comments to try and answer as best to my ability. And I will catch you guys tomorrow on Sunday to where we will go in all these events in depth. And... Uh, hopefully answer some of your questions over there. So thanks for so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.